Right guys, welcome back. This is Dean with another simulation for CompTIA A plus exams. If you're new to my channel, I'm mostly uploading CompTIA A plus network plus videos. So if you study for this type of exams, go and check out my other videos. In this video, we're going to learn and see the six steps of troubleshooting uh, methodology according to CompTIA A plus. It is very important part of the exam and uh, we are going to learn the six steps also in a bit of details and uh, oh, it's, it's kind of simulation as well. So basically here on the left side we have the six steps of troubleshooting and they are not in the correct order. We need to drag the step, the correct step on the right description. There are six steps and uh, after we decide the first step we're going to explain a bit about the first step just briefly so you can also learn if you don't know anything about these steps uh, like i said they're very important part of the exam i'm sure you might have it as a multiple answer question so it's it's crucial to know them also you can employ them in your work you know you can use them in real life experiences so let's start We'll do it like this, Lee. We'll start from the first step. So, which one is the first step? What are you going to do first when there is an issue with something, software or hardware? So, of course, first you need to identify the problem. That's the first step you are going to take. By doing this, let's go a bit more detail about the first step. Step one of the CompTIA troubleshooting methodology is to identify the problem. This step involves gathering information about the issue from the user or the system itself. The goal is to identify the symptoms of the problem, determine its impact on the system or user and gather any relevant data or error messages that may help diagnose the issue. Some common techniques used in this step include reviewing logs or error messages, gathering information from log files and error messages, questioning users, identifying symptoms, determining recent changes, duplicating the problem, approaching multiple problems one at a time, narrowing the scope of the problem. So this is for the first step. First step is identify the problem. Okay, we're going to the step number two. After you know the problem, what you going to do second. So you're going to establish a theory of probable cause. This is the second step guys. Let's read about it. So this step involve, involves analyzing the information gathered in step one to determine the most likely cause or causes of the problem. This stage may require significant research on your part vendor documentation, your organization's own documentation, and a good auth, you know, you can Google it as well. You need to be good at searching. <laughs> and yeah, specific steps here may include questioning the obvious, considering multiple approaches, including top to bottom or bottom to top for layered technologies such as networks. So that's the network, uh, that's the second step of the troubleshooting methodology. Let's go to the third step. After you have established a theory of probable, probable cause, what you're going to do next? And the step three is test the theory to determine the cause. Because you have already established, you already have something in mind what it might be the issue. So you need to test that, uh, that uh, theory of yours. So test three. Step three, I mean. In this step, the technician may use a variety of techniques and tools to isolate and test the potential cause of the problem. For example, if the theory of probable cause is that a particular piece of hardware is causing the issue, the technician may test the hardware by swapping it out with a non-working component or running diagnostic tests on hardware on the hardware to confirm that it is functioning properly. It is important to carefully document the result of these tests and experiments as they will be used in a subsequent steps of the troubleshooting methodology. If the test confirm the theory of probable cause, the technician can move on to the step four, which is to de oopsie, 
we reveal the step four here. I'm not gonna read it. If the test refute the theory, refuse the theory, the technician may need to return to step two to establish a new theory of probable cause. Overall, testing the theory of probable cause is a critical step in the troubleshooting process as it helps to ensure that the technician is addressing the root cause of the problem rather than the, just the symptoms. So, basically, we know the third step. So the fourth step, we've seen it on the text there. But anyway, this uh, simulation is some kind of learning uh, thing. So you also learn more details about the troubleshooting. And like I said, it will help you memorize the steps, which are important part of the exam. Step four. It is to establish a plan of action and implement the solution. So let's say you already tested the theory to determine the cause. You know what's going on and now you need to establish a plan of action and implement the solution. So in this step, the technician should consider a range of possible solutions, weighting factors such as cost, time and complexity. The solution chosen should address the root cause of the problem identified in step 3 and should be feasible and effective in resolving the issue. Once the solution has been identified, the technician should develop a detailed plan for implementing the solution. This may involve coordinating with other IT professionals or stakeholders, scheduling downtime for maintenance or upgrades and testing the solution before deploying it. Here are some reasons to plan ahead before blind, blindly jumping into a course of action. Some fixes require reboots or other more significant forms of downtime. You may need to download software, patches, drivers or entire operating system files before proceeding. Your change management procedures may require you to test modifications to a system's configuration in a staging environment before implementing the fix in production. You may need to document a series of complex steps, commands and scripts you may need to back up data that might be put at risk during the recovery. You may need approval from other IT staff members before making changes. So this is all about step four, establish a plan of action and implement the solution. You need to consider all this. Uh, after that, we are going to move to step five. So step five, it is, we have two steps left, verify improve system functionality and implement preventive measures. This is the step five. This step involves ensuring that the problem has been fully resolved and taking steps to prevent similar issues from occurring in the future. In this step, the technician should carefully monitor the system to ensure that the solution implemented in step four has resolved the issue. They may need to perform additional testing and diagnostic checks to verify that the system is functioning as expected. Once the problem has been fully resolved, the technician should take steps to prevent similar issues from occurring in the future. This may involve updating software or hardware configuration, implementing new security measures or performing regular maintenance tasks to keep the system running smoothly. Last step, guys, it is the sixth step, which is document findings, actions and outcomes. So let's read a little bit about the sixth step. Is yeah, is to document all the information gathered during the troubleshooting process from top to bottom, including the problem, diagnostic test, solution, attempted and outcomes, everything you need to be documented. The technician should create a detailed report of the troubleshooting process and communicate the findings and outcomes to stakeholders or, and also with your IT team. This step is important for future reference, improving the system and preventing similar issues from occurring again. So that's, that's it guys, that's it from this some kind of simulation. Like I said, it's also a learning material so you can learn something about the troubleshooting process uh, from CompTIA which might help you on your exam and it will help you uh, troubleshooting software and hardware when you start working as an IT professional. I hope these videos are helpful. Please do subscribe for my channel, like my videos for support and you can leave a comment if you like. I will, I will be very, very grateful for that. And I'll see you on my next video. I'm uploading each Thursday a new video, each seven day, one video per week. So thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Take care and good luck with your studies.